morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. We are back for the review of Life After Lockup. This is Season 2, Episode 17, Risks and Regulations. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. So, this episode was cute. It was entertaining like all of them are. So, I'm just going to get right into the review. Um, We're going to go couple by couple like we normally do, okay? Let's start off with Lizzie, okay? So Lizzie is with her daughter. Her daughter comes over to Lizzie's apartment. You know, her daughter stays four hours away. Her daughter brings over some Mexican food. They're sitting back, they're kicking, talking about the date that Lizzie had the night before. Remember, she had that blind date with that um, the dude that was not her type, which we already know he was not her type. But um, she's telling her all about, you know, her her date, you know, that she had. But before we get, uh, before that, Lizzie is in the kitchen making cheese, y'all. This half a crushed up some Cheetos and some water. She was saying in prison when they didn't have no cheese, how they had to make cheese sauce. I'm going to need, I'm going to need Lizzie to go down to the local bodega or whatever and get you some real cheese. You got a weed check in your bank account some damn well. We're not in prison no more. You can go and get you some for real, for real cheese. You ain't got to make no processed cheese or however you do that shit. We ain't in prison no more, Damon. This is not how we do this. Go get you some damn cheese and quit playing. But um, she was talking about how after the date went so horrible last night, how she was tempted to call, uh, to call Scott. And so, of course, that instantly pissed her daughter off because, you know, her daughter cannot fucking stand Scott. She thinks Scott is um, this horrible asshole of a person, which all Scott did was be there to support Lizzie and her addiction for the 10 years that she was locked up. Or he was there for, what, four years or whatever. But regardless, she coming at Scott like Scott did something wrong. Scott didn't do nothing wrong, baby. But be there and support your mother, yes, through her drug habit and $143 worth of $143,000 worth of her drug addiction but still Scott didn't do nothing wrong you won't be mad at somebody be mad at your damn mama but of course she is mad at her mama if he does if she goes back and she talks with Scott so she tells Lizzie to make a promise that she's not gonna go back to Scott but little do she know girl this happened and already went and bought a took a ticket booked the flight and all of that she done went and um saddled up her little old car that Scott bought her mind you Got her little old luggage together, rolled herself on down to that airport, and baby, she finna go see Scott. She finna go do a pop-up on his ass. He don't even know that she coming. She done lied to her daughter and told her daughter. She didn't promise her daughter, but she did tell her daughter that she wasn't finna go see Scott. But oh yes, she is on her way to go see Scott. And I'm telling y'all now, I'm not hopeful about this at all, goddammit. She don't need to be with Scott. Scott don't need to be with her. And really, I honestly think the only reason why she really missed Scott is because Scott... She was lonely. She was in prison, and Scott was there for her. Yes, I'm sure she does have a little bit of love for him, but being in love with this man, child, you ain't in love with this man. Stop lying, and stop lying to yourself. You just need that security. So next, y'all, we have Andrea and Lamar. So Andrea and Lamar, they're back home or whatever. You know, she picked him up from prison. So he's finally meeting with the kids. And so as soon as he gets there, the youngest one, I think her name is Priscilla. She's seven years old. She's excited to see him. She runs up, jumps on him. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Like, she all excited to see him and shit, right? The other two kids... They could take it or leave it. They don't give a damn if that nigga's there or not, quite honestly. And as soon as he gets there, the first thing he want to do, he want to go eat some soul food. So her daughter, Priscilla, she's like, okay, well, mom and I just spent all this time going to the store, preparing what we're going to cook for you. And as soon as you get here, you want to go eat some, some food? Like, what's the point when we could, we could cook for you right here, motherfucker? You, you, you can have home-cooked food instead of prison food. He's like, nah, man, I don't want to wait. I want to go have some soul food. Nigga, with what money? You just got out of prison. You, 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 you don't have the authority to make the decisions on what you want to go eat like that. Nigga, what? Try so they get to the soul food restaurant. This nigga sitting up there ordering up food like he been in prison for another 18 years. When I think he was only in there for like a couple of months, three, four months this time, he ordered chicken, mashed potato, collard greens, cornbread, um, f f every damn thing, pork chops, corn on the cob, every goddamn thing. Like, he been locked up, and the baby girl, well, not the baby baby girl, but the girl, um, Nala, she's embarrassed. She like, you are loud, nigga. Everybody up in here can hear you, which I wasn't even there at the restaurant with that ass. I was like, goddamn, nigga, why you gotta be so loud? Don't let everybody need to know that you just got the fresh 
fuck out of jail shit order and shit like you done been locked up for years so anyways they start talking about how basically when he left how he hurt them and that's why her son Tennyson and the daughter Nyla that's why they don't welcome him with huge open arms when he comes back because look here you hurt us you really hurt our mother and that's what um Nyla was saying that she was really looking for from him she was looking for him to apologize not for what she did to us but what for what she did for, to my mother and how she was so hurt before you went back this time, afraid that she was going to go back. And then you end up going back and you hurt her again. And I really wanted you to apologize to my mom, which she didn't do. It's kind of like he has no regard for it. I mean, he apologizes. He says he's going to do better. We'll see how that goes. Andrea does say if his ass go back to jail, she going back to Utah and she going to live her happy little Mormon life, which I don't blame her ass because this nigga is like he a loped out gangster set trip and bang. He a for real straight up crip dude. She is a old fashioned Amish Mormon woman. And so them two, they don't mix at all. They don't even meet halfway in the middle. So I'm, I'm, I want to see how that shit going to go down right there because that shit going to be crazy. So next up, we have Marcelino and Brittany. So Marcelino and Brittany, oh, my legs itch. I think a mosquito bit me. Goddamn. But um, they're meeting up with the lawyer to talk about possibly getting custody, 50-50 uh, custody of her son Gio from her ex, um, Tito. Now, right now, he has full custody of her son. Now, she's saying that when she got locked up, he went behind her back and filed for custody of her son. And, of course, because her being in prison, she couldn't show up for none of the court dates, so the judge granted him full custody of her son. Now, since she's gotten out of jail, her son has been with her full-time. Marcelino has been playing daddy full-time to, uh, to him, and the ex-Tito ain't been nowhere around, right? So, Brittany is being smart about the shit. She wants to go and meet with the lawyer. She's telling the lawyer that right now, I want to get 50-50 custody of him. I don't want to go full throttle and try to get full custody of him because you never know what he's going to do. I know this man, and I know he can be very manipulative. And if I do try to go to him and try to get full custody, he can bring up my past. Now, Brittany got a sketchy-ass past. What did she get? She's got robbery, conspiracy to com commit burglary, burglary and a possession of a stolen vehicle. So the lawyer is telling her, if you try to go in him full throttle, like you're saying, and, and you know, you try to get full custody of him, he can bring up all your old shit. Marcelino wants to get full custody of him because Marcelino, again, he's got this machismo-ness about him to where he just feels like, I don't want this man to be no parts in his life. I've been his dad full time for over a year now, so I need to have him full time. Which, Marcelino, he had a fucked up childhood. And nobody can speak to what that man has been through and why he feels the way he feels and why he is the way he is. But, Brittany is trying to tell him, look here, you don't know this man like I know him. So, I'm not going to try to go at him and try to basically take my son away from him. Because she doesn't want to take him away from his dad. Which, Brittany, I mean, that's a real ass bitch. I don't blame her. Like she said, he hasn't done anything like physically wrong. He's not abused him. He's not any of that I mean he just hasn't been around which that's gonna end up coming back and biting him in the ass because her son Giovanni with his little cute ass gonna keep getting older and he's gonna see that he's not around and he's gonna see that Marcelino is there more and more and he's calling Marcelino daddy more and more that's end up he, that's gonna hurt him already they ain't gotta take that boy away from him that's gonna hurt him already so later that evening after they met with the judge, I mean, not with the judge, they met with the lawyer because, of course, the lawyer was giving them advice on what they should do and how they should go forth with everything. They're in their backyard talking, and Brittany is saying, like, to Marcelino, she's telling him, like, look, I need you to understand, I've already lost two other kids to adoption, which I completely forgot about that. That was on the last season. She said she lost custody of her other two children when she was 18 when she went to prison the first time. That's why she's trying to be smart about how she goes and how she approaches trying to get custody of her son now from her ex, um, Tito, because she already knows if this nigga decides to be an asshole, he gonna be a full asshole and he's gonna take him away from me and she don't want that. And Marcelino is, like I said, he's had a a, a, a horrible upbringing. Not, well, I wouldn't say horrible because, you know, he said that he did have some good times, but his dad was an asshole, which Marcelino, you an asshole too, so you probably get it from your daddy. 
Just saying. So then Marcelino was like, well, um, since I feel the way I feel about the situation, maybe I should go and holler at um, G uh, Tito, man to man. Nah, that's a bad idea. You should not go and holler at him, man to man, because he's an asshole like you an asshole, and two assholes together, baby, that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. And so Brittany tells him, no, look, chill out. I, that's my ex. I know how to work the angle let Big Mama handle this. And so Marcelino tells her, okay, so what if you try to go over there, you try to talk some sense to this man and he got all kind of walls put up and he ain't trying to hear it. She tells him, that's when we fight. I Let me tell you something. I fucks with Brittany. I fucks with Brittany. I like Brittany. She's smart. She a real ass bitch. And she, she, she's very, she knows what to do. She knows... It took her, I guess, enough time being in prison to know what to do and what not to do. What battles to fight and what battles to leave the hell alone. But I fucks with Brittany. I fucks with you, girl. I'm riding with you on that. Y'all, Pola Tink Tink, Clint and Tracy. So, Clint is at his dad's meat market, right? I guess that's where he's working now. He ain't working over there at the hotel no more where he was he was working for his ex-wife because she done fired his ass from that. So, he's working over there at the meat market with his daddy, right? And he is trying his best to talk his daddy into talking to his mom so that his mom can meet up with Tracy. Now, Tracy got one day left and she's off parole. She's been on parole for the last 10 years, she said. She got 36 hours left and she will be off parole, right? So, before he goes to work, he goes and drops Tracy off so she can do some shopping, right? Now, this is after they've already tried to go to the mama house and meet with the mama. When, you know, mama told you, hell nah, bitch, get off my property. She ain't want shit to do with her, right? So, Clint decides that he's going to drop Tracy off, give her a little pocket change or whatever, let her go do some shopping so she can kind of digress and, you know, relieve her mind. So, she goes to a furniture store looking at some furniture, right, girl? This part was funny as hell. So, she in the furniture store. The girl asked her, like, the clerk was like, oh, man, is there something I can help you with today? And Tracy's just like, oh, you know, I'm in a bachelor pad and I'm just so lonely right now because my husband's in-laws won't have anything to do with me. And so, I just, oh, I just don't want to do. Poor Tracy, she fiending. You can, oh, poor Tracy. Poor let's see, see. She starts spilling her guts to the clerk in the damn furniture store. The clerk was like, oh, I'll be your friend for today. Tracy like, oh, just for today? Bitch, yeah, just for today. Bitch, I don't know you like <laughs> This whole part was funny as hell. So she starts spilling her guts to, to the, to the um, furniture clerk, telling the furniture clerk how her family don't like her, yada, 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 yada. So, in this meantime, again, Clint is back over here at the meat market trying to talk to his daddy. He's telling his daddy, like, look, man, hey, you know, I, 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 Tracy has to earn my trust, and she has to earn mom's trust. I mean, don't you guys want to meet her? I know you really want to meet her, right? You haven't even met her yet. Like, he really trying to talk his daddy into meeting this bitch, and his daddy kind of looking like, uh, I don't know about this, son. <laughs> So Tracy ends up leaving from the furniture store, right? She got a little blanket, her comforter and all that. So she gets in the Uber. She riding around with the Uber driver. She starts telling the Uber about how her in-laws don't like her. Her in-laws fam don't want shit to do with her. She's spilling her whole guts to the Uber driver. Even the Uber driver like, God damn, bitch, can I finally get to your destination so I can drop your ass off, bitch? God damn. So finally she gets fed up. And so she tells the Uber driver, hey, drop me off right here. Uber driver drops her off right in front of a bar. This bitch don't need to be in no goddamn bar. So she goes in there to the bar. She orders a tequila and a Coke. Now, the drink is sitting there in front of her. If she's drinking it or not, I don't know. If I had to guess, I would say yes, because it looked like it was kind of going down a little bit. I don't know, right? So she starts telling the bartender all of her business again. Tracy just don't got no friends. She ain't got nobody to talk to. And at this point, I'm feeling bad for Tracy. I'm like, damn, mama, just give Tracy a chance. Like, this bitch need friends for real because she going to relapse. And she even said that. She was telling the person in the bar that, like, look, it's times like this that I just, I just want to go out and I just want to use because I don't have nobody to talk to. I don't have nobody to do nothing with. Nothing. I, I, God damn it, help me. So later that night, Clint is on his way home from work, right? So his dad ends up calling him. His dad tells him that he's convinced his mom to meet with Tracy. Why don't they come over the next day for brunch? Clint is excited as hell. He's excited to rush home and tell his goddess what the hell his dad says. As soon as he pulls up to the house, all the lights are off. 
ain't nobody home. Tracy ain't there. He goes in the house. He goes searching for his goddess. His goddess ain't nowhere in the house. His goddess is still at the goddamn bar. Again, whether or not she drinks, I don't know. But he starts freaking out. This nigga starts chain smoking cigarettes back to back. You know this nigga got PTSD from when they got married, when she went off and went on a crack binge on his ass. So now this nigga, he just can't trust nothing that she do. He like, oh no, this bitch is in jail. She done went out, she's motherfucking crack, and she's in jail, right? So later on, finally, she ends up showing up. She comes to the door, and instantly he's pissed. He's like, my... What the fuck? Where you been at, man? Don't be doing this shit to me. You know I'm fucked up in the head. And so she tells him, like, look, you know, I, I, I almost relapsed. I didn't drink. But um, she's telling him that, you know, alcohol, she's not thirsty for alcohol. She's been on parole for 10 years. She's ready to get off parole. So that's not what she wants to do. She's come back, and she's there to see him. She's like, what other way for you to trust me than for me to be home? I'm home. Motherfucker, you home? What? Seven, eight hours later, of course, you can't, you, you know this nigga got PTSD. You fucked him up. You can't do that to that boy. He gonna have a whole heart attack out here. So he tells her that, okay, my mom agreed to meet with you. They're excited about it. She's excited about it. He's telling her like, yeah, I, bitch, I need you to be on good behavior because my mom already don't like your ass. So you already skating on thin ice as it is. So bitch, don't come sideways with none of this bullshit. Y'all. I'm not hopeful about this meat at all. Tracy, look, Clint Mama don't like you, okay? Let me just tell you, Clint Mama don't like you, and quite honestly, I don't know if she is going to like you. But, hey, um, I'm excited to see how this meeting is going to go. <laughs> oh, I'm here for it, baby. <sighs> Lord, y'all. Finally, my favorite little ratchet love affair that is Michael, Megan, and Sarah. So to pick off where it, to pick up where it left off last time, okay, you know, Sarah was at the little baby place shopping with her homegirls because, you know, she's 15 months pregnant, about to deliver any goddamn time. She gets the call from Mike finally after he's been with Megan this whole time after he got released from prison. So Megan, I'm um, sorry, Sarah's outside in her car on the phone yelling at Mike in her black voice. I was there for you. I held it down for you and you didn't do nothing for me. You should be bowing down to my ass. This black voice comes out like it ain't nothing. Like the bitch is like a light switch. She turns it on and she turns it off. And the one thing that I don't like about Mike is like he has no guilt in him whatsoever. He's even trying to flip it back on her like, okay, so what? So do you want a divorce? So like, what do you want to do? Like, and she's like, no, I want you to say that you want a divorce. You've been with your bitch all day. Yada, 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 yada. He's telling her, I don't have no girl. I don't got no girl. Mike is Oh, Mike is like nails on a fucking chalkboard to me. He is like nails on a fucking chalkboard to me. He even tells this girl, so what you want me to do? Like kiss your ass? Like what do you want me to do? I don't like Sarah, but at this moment, yes, you need to be kissing her goddamn ass. This girl is 150 weeks pregnant with your goddamn baby. And you out here hoeing around, not only with Megan, because let's not forget, she asked you how many other females it was. And you never said how many females it was, which means it was at least three, four, five more females that she don't know about, that we don't know about, that I'm sure is out there floating about, that they all know about Sarah and Megan. For sure, but they still fucking with you, but that's neither here nor there. So... He gets off the phone with Sarah because he's mad about it. He's telling his sister Day Day, like, look, ain't no point in talking to this hoe right now. She mad. She pissed off. I need to go relieve some stress. So what does he do? He calls Megan. Megan comes to the house and scoops him up. Really? So before they leave, his sister Day Day comes outside and tells her, like, look, okay, it's 530. He needs to be back here in the house by 7 o'clock. He got an ankle bracelet on. We're not going to go through the same old bullshit again. Megan is like, okay, we got the same goal in mind. Because really, all Megan goal is to get her little nut off. That's all she want to do. She ready to go bing, bang, bow, pull him with them so she can go drop him off. They can pick up where they left off again the next day. That's all she worried about. Now, she, Mike gets in the car, and she even asks Mike, so how does it go? And he tells her, yeah, I talk with Sarah, but right now it's hard talking with her and yada, yada, yada. So, she brushes it off like it's nothing and basically tells him that they're going to pick up where they left off. So you know this man is married. You know he got a baby on the way. You know he just got off the phone with his wife right before you came to pick him up. And you ready to go pick up where y'all left off. 
Now, it's at this point to where the tables have turned. Like, Megan, I'm not feeling you in this situation right here. Like, girl. Girl. First, I was on your side because you didn't know nothing about Sarah. But when you knew about her... You knew about this man being married. You knew he has a baby on the way. You're still fucking with him. Girl, really though? Wow. When they in the car though, on the way to the hotel, Michael had a nerve to ask Megan, so I know uh, women have a hard time staying faithful when they niggas is locked up, so let me know who you been fucking around with. And she tells him, well, Mike got a lot of nerve asking me that. She's like, nah, I ain't been fucking with nobody. Mm -mm. I think that's a secret that she holding on to right there. Woman to woman, she lied. She done fucked around on Mike. I don't think she's pregnant. I don't think that's the secret that she has. I think the secret that she has to tell him is that she doesn't mess around with somebody else. Because on the next episode, you can see he gets pissed off at her. He's telling her, man, that's some whole shit. That's because she doesn't mess around with somebody else. I can tell what a girl, bye. So they get back to the hotel. They hop right on in the shower, get to Goosen, because Mike is like, hey, I only got 30 minutes. Let's do this damn thing. So they get right in the shower, and they get to Goosen. Y'all, this episode was entertaining like they all are. The ratchet tree was there like it always is. And what can I say? The, the tables have turned. I still don't like Sarah, but at this point, I'm team Sarah. And Megan, you wrong for that shit. You wrong for that shit. Why would you still be fornicating with this motherfucker, knowing good and damn well that he's married with a baby on the way? Y'all, this episode was good. Before I get out of here, y'all, I've been snacking on these gummies. I got these gummies for my birthday. My best friend bought them for me. Rosé all day. It's this little candy shop that is in the domain. I love them. I love them. I love them. I've been snacking on these damn gummies all day. They are the bomb. So, you looking for a gift to get somebody? Serafina, the luxury candy boutique. And these gummies are the bomb. Rosé all day. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think. And um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ah, hello.